all my beautiful sisters from those other misters welcome back to my channel today i'm going to talk to you guys about a product that i purchased recently it is from hourglass it is the new red zero confession ultra slim lipstick now why on earth would i be making a video about a single lipstick that's not something that i do um but some of you will know if you watch beauty news that uh, this lipstick is quite innovative in itself not only does it have amazing red packaging which i'm dead for um it actually contains a new patent pending ingredient called red zero um which is what the lipstick is named after now why is this exciting because it is a vegan alternative to carmine when i saw what hourglass were doing with this lipstick i got really excited and if you're wondering why i would find that exciting uh it's because this is what true innovation looks like in the beauty industry we see um minor innovations every year in the beauty industry things like packaging color layouts and formulas and blah 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 cool cool whatever that's good for you uh, but this is this is kind of next level. So if you're not familiar with what carmine is, it is an ingredient that has been used basically since the dawn of beauty products. It is a red pigment that is made from insects. The insect in question is called a cochineal and they're a scale insect, so they feed on plants cacti to be specific obviously carmine is used in the beauty industry but it's also used in like the food and beverage industry um it can be used to like uh improve the color of things like jam or sauces um i know sometimes it's used to like up the color of fruits like canned cherries and stuff like that so carmine is very widely used to farm carmine basically what they do is they infest the cacti with the cochineal and they allow them to breed now the pigment is found in the females and their babies their babies are called nymphs what a cute name um, and basically the reason why they contain this red pigment is to uh, deter predators i'm going to read from a website the process of harvesting and basically turning the insects into carmine pigment i will leave a link to it down below if you want to check out the article as well because it's very interesting so it says the insects are carefully brushed from the cacti and placed into bags the bags are taken to the production plant and there the insects are killed by immersion in hot water or by exposure to sunlight steam or the heat of an oven it takes about 70,000 insects to make one pound or 450 four grams of cochineal the part of the insect that contains the most carmine is the abdomen that houses the fertilized eggs of the cochineal once dried a process begins whereby the abdomens and fertilized eggs are separated from the rest of the atomical parts these are then ground into a powder and cooked to extract the maximum amount of color this cooked solution is filtered and put through special processes that cause all carmine particles to precipitate to the bottom of the cooking container the liquid is removed and the bottom of the container is left with pure carmine so that's how we get carmine and that is how we determine that the product is definitely not vegan because it is a living creature and also we get into territory where people need to decide if this is a cruelty free ingredient or not now the cruelty free part is where things get a little bit interesting i'm going to leave a link to another website in the description box it is the inky decoder and basically this website allows you to search for ingredients and what makes it a really awesome website is that they will then list a bunch of products that contain that ingredient. So I obviously looked up Carmine and I looked at the products that contain Carmine and I've got to say I was actually quite surprised. When I was looking over the products that were listed as containing Carmine, there was a couple that stood out to me. Um, I didn't go too deep into this because I was like, holy shit, I could be here for a week going through this. Um, but there was something that stood out to me 
probably because it's a little bit close to home. I saw on the second page of products that were listed was the Mecca Lip From Within Primer. Now, if you are not from Australia or New Zealand, then you might not know what Mecca is. It's uh, basically a beauty retailer here in Australia and New Zealand, kind of like Sephora, basically. Like most beauty retailers, uh, they do have kind of like their own home brand and uh, they have heaps of products, but one in particular stood out to me. It is the Mecca Cosmetica Lip From Within Primer. I've used this primer. It's actually quite a nice primer. And if you go to the Mecca website and you have a look at the listing for this product, it says that it is cruelty free, but not vegan. And that's fine because it contains carmine. The cruelty free argument around carmine, uh, I guess it's um, a little bit, a little bit difficult. In my eyes, personally, I don't think carmine is a cruelty-free ingredient because it literally comes from insects. However, if the beauty product contains carmine but it has not been tested on animals, it can still be considered cruelty-free. Now, I'm not trying to be a whistleblower about cruelty-free products that contain carmine. Um, I'm not an expert on cruelty-free products by any stretch of the imagination. I own not like non-cruelty free products um, but I do think that way of the future of the beauty industry will be 100% cruelty free at some stage but my opinion carmine comes from a crushed beetle or a crushed insect it is it it's not a cruelty free ingredient in my books but it appears that the loophole of a cruelty free product being a product that is not tested on animals is allowing this ingredient to be found inside cruelty free products now i'm sure if you are somebody who is a massively strong supporter of cruelty free makeup and beauty products you probably already know to check your ingredient lists However, if you are just getting into it or you think about getting it into getting into it in the future, make sure you do some research, make sure you check those ingredient lists. And if you are checking those ingredient lists, then what you want to look out for are things called carmine, cochineal, cochineal extract, crimson lake or carmine lake, and then we have natural red 4, CI 75470 or E120. They all reference carmine. From what I could find while I was going down the rabbit hole, uh, pretty much everywhere in the world requires a product that contains carmine to have it listed on the ingredient list because while it is a very, very safe ingredient, some people can have severe allergic reactions to it, but it's fair to keep in mind that some people can have severe allergic reactions to anything. So now that we've got all of the nitty gritty out of the way, let's talk about why carmine as a color is even special. To start with, it has been used for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's, could we call it a unique shade of red or not? Look, this might be debatable for some people. Personally, I feel like it is quite a unique shade. Um, it is a rich deep red. I am wearing it today. Um, it's It doesn't really lean cool toned or warm toned. It's almost like a, I don't know, you, I suppose you would then say, well, if it's not cool or it's not warm, it's neutral. But mm, it's an interesting color because when it is used in its purest form, this is what she looks like. Let's also give you guys a swatchy swatch with the actual lipstick there it is and i'll put a color swatch on the screen as well so you can see what carmine is supposed to look like as a color in its purest form now when carmine is processed into other colors it takes on a bit more of a pinky nature but there are also 
purple tones in there. If we look at some more colours that were created from Carmine, um, we've got some interesting ones. Some from Crayola. These are both meant to be fluorescent shades. So there's Wild Watermelon, which was formerly known as Ultra Red, and then we have Radical Red. Now, if you ask me, these aren't reds. <laughs> I'm a bit of a red purist. It's like, it's my favourite colour, to be honest. And, uh, I wouldn't classify these as red shades. We have Paradise Pink, which was created by Pantone, and I would support that this is a pink shade. We have Rich Carmine, which is also known as Chinese Carmine. There's Spanish Carmine, Pectoral Carmine, which is typically used in paintings, and also we have Japanese Carmine. So you probably notice, compared to Carmine on its own, those shades that derive from it are quite different. They lean very heavily pink. Some have a very, very slight purpley hue to them as well when you get into like the deeper or darker shades. Now you might be looking at my lips or this swatch and going, come on, surely there's lipsticks out there that are that exact shade. Or I, I can even, I reckon I've got one at home. And I have absolutely no doubt that at some stage in the history of beauty products, this exact shade has been made by someone somewhere. The difference is Hourglass has sat down, or Unilever, because that's who owns Hourglass. They've sat down and they've gone, right, we're going to do all of the colour mixing, mixing all of the pigments. We're going to create an exact dupe for Carmine at its, like, base colour. It's not going to be ever so slightly lighter or darker or pinker or bluer or anything like that. Exact dupe for Carmine. It's going to be completely vegan, completely cruelty free, and we're going to patent it. And that's exactly what they did. So how did they do it? How did they do it? How did they create an exact dupe for Carmine that doesn't contain Carmine? Well, they mixed a whole bunch of pigments together, of course. So I checked out the ingredients because that's the only way that I could, you know, come to any sort of conclusion about how they did it. Um, and it appears that they have created Red Zero from some iron oxides, titanium dioxide, and a couple of uh, Red Lake shades. So what I found was it contains CI77491, which is called Rust Red and it offers uh, pink tones. Then we have CI77492, which is yellow, and CI77499, which is black. The yellow and black are very, very often found in foundations, concealers, anything that is like creating a flesh tone. Then we have titanium dioxide, also known as CI77891. It's white, and we have two red lake shades. We've got Red Seven Lake. This is a synthetic pigment uh, and it is a bright red. And then we have Red 33 Lake, which is CI7100. Uh, again, that is a synthetic pigment and it is a like purpley red. Think about beetroot, basically. It's that kind of color. Now, it's not so simple as to just take all those colors, throw them in a vat, give it a mix, and Bob's your uncle, you've got carmine. No. Obviously, each shade needs to be used in probably a very precise amount. So that is where I'm assuming Hourglass is like patenting, patenting the formula. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to create this video in one of my videos a little while ago, and um, people were keen. They wanted to see it. I wanted to create it, so obviously I'm going to make it. But one of the common... Uh, requests that I got was to swatch this lipstick next to all of my Carmine lipsticks in my collection. Now I had a look through my stash and I actually don't own a whole lot of red lipsticks um, and I didn't think there was much point in swatching this compared to a bright red or you know a really really dark 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 red. If, if Carmine is used in a lipstick, it doesn't mean that the exact colour is going to be this. This colour is to replicate what Carmine looks like on its own. 
Often carmine is used with a lot of other colors as well though. However, what I did do was I went through my stash, I looked at all of my reds, I swatched any that looked like maybe they were close, and um, I found one that I would consider an almost dupe. Now this gets a bit difficult because the formula of this is different to this guy. This is so rich and pigmented and full on and this guy is a bit more sheer and glossy and you can see the differences there anyway just by me holding them up. But what I'll do is I'll swatch them next to each other so you can get an idea of, you know, similarities. I'm going to have to swatch this guy quite heavy because it just goes on too sheer. So you can see they're slightly similar. I definitely don't have any exact dupes for the hourglass shade in my stash. Um, but the Revlon, you might already be able to guess what's happening here. Contains carmine. There you go. Another thing that I wanted to do in this video was swatch the Red Zero shade uh, next to the other red Hourglass Confession Ultra Slim lipsticks that I own. Now, if you don't know this about me, I am freaking obsessed with these lipsticks. I have these here. I have my reds on the bench here. I don't have many reds, unfortunately. And I have a bunch of the the little refills that go in them because these are refillable lipsticks. I love this. I This formula of lipstick is my favorite formula and it has been since it launched and I first tried them. I have purchased every single one of these, oh, except a couple that were gifted to me, but look, I'm obsessed. And the packaging is just amazing. It is the best, but I digress. Let's swatch. Okay, let's start with Red Zero and I will swatch them here so you can see them beautifully pigmented. I love the thin bullet of these lipsticks. It offers great precision. Love, love, love. This one here is called Secretly. It was the first red lipstick that I purchased from the Hourglass uh, Ultra Slim Confession lipstick range. I'm going to swatch these downwards so you can sort of get an idea of what the colors look like. Then I have Loves All of You, which is this one here. You can see that it's a lot more orange toned. This one is At Night. And this one here is called All Forever. Let's take a close look. So we can see that these three shades over here, uh, they're, not, they're not the same. We've got one that's a lot more brighter and orange tone. This one is deeper and I would argue that there's more purple tones in there. And this one is more sort of brick like a brick shade. So there's more orange and brown tones in there. The one that comes closest is Secretly. And I'm going to swatch these two nice and big side by side so you can take a close look. This one here is Red Zero and this one is Secretly. And hopefully you guys can catch the nuances there. They are different. They do feel quite similar in their coloring, but they are different. Secretly is brighter and Red Zero has more depth to it. We can definitely argue that on the lips, no one's going to tell the difference. I'm the first person to like call that out with pretty much anything, especially when there's like 10 of the same eyeshadow shade in a single palette. It's not necessary, but when we're talking about creating an exact alternative, I should say an exact color alternative to an item or an ingredient that is created from a living creature. That creature has to be farmed and killed for us to have it. I think we can argue that it's okay if there are similar shades on the market that look like the Red Zero ingredient, but the innovation is in the fact that we don't need to kill bugs if we want this exact shade anymore. What we're seeing here is a brand making a change for the better. And I think that's fantastic. It excites me. That's like true innovation. I'm kind of excited that I got to see something like this happen in my lifetime. This isn't just creating an alternative product like 
uh, instead of using beeswax, we're going to use um, some other wax, like coconut oil or something. This is creating an exact replica of a shade that does not harm insects in its creation. So when a brand comes along and creates an exact alternative to beeswax, maybe there is one, I don't know, but this is just my example that I'm using. When they create that alternative, that will also be exciting. We don't have to farm the beehives anymore to get beeswax, which is a fantastic ingredient. But, you know, some people have issue with it. So I think that's all I can say on this subject. This video is so long. It's so long. What I would say is I love this lipstick. I love it. Also, the formula is bomb. The, if you've never tried these Hourglass Confession lipsticks, um, they are insanely pigmented, as you've seen. They are creamy, but they wear really well. They don't like smudge all over your face. Mm, so good. Also, like I said, they're refillable. You can, once you use up the uh, lipstick, you can swap it out for another one. You can buy the refills individually. Or you can, you know, mix and match your packaging. Also, this packaging is bomb. So I'm going to leave that there, guys. Feel free to leave your comments down below. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.